Hey everybody, Jason here. Sitting here at the dentist, waiting to get my uh, my teeth cleaned and have my exam and all that stuff. You know, I was listening to some things today at, at work, people talking about what's going on with Wizards of the Woke and um, all the changes they're making to D&D &D and just how fragile everyone over there is and you know I've made my my thoughts on this culture um, known um, a number of times and that's nothing new to anybody and luckily I'm seeing and hearing more things out there uh, with people fighting against it and um, you know taking a stand against this silly censorship that that's going on and all the PC culture the cancel culture um, the woke culture you know there are a lot of people out there that are, are not having it they're not having it uh, I've, I know of some people who are not touching anything else from Wizards of the Woke. They're not touching D&D. &D. They're not touching Magic the Gathering. Um, and I think that's fantastic that they're, that they're taking the stand against it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, they say get woke, go broke, which... Hopefully that happens with wizards. Hopefully they learn their lesson. But uh, I doubt that's going to happen. I really do. I uh, have been reading other things. And, you know, the article that wizards released the statement they released uh, uh, diversity in Dungeons and Dragons which is a fucking joke um, they're hiring sensitivity readers um, and that's a job that's it's just a it's a spiral it's a it's a downward spiral for whatever product is being reviewed by these sensitivity writers because you know when you get hired for a job, you don't want to lose your job, right? You want to do a good job and keep your job. So if your job is to find something that people are going to get upset about and have their feelings hurt by, um, then you're going to find something because you want to keep your job, right? So whether or not there really is anything in any of these, these books that they're hired to read that would offend anyone, hurt feelings or whatever, even if there isn't, they will decide to make things that are hurtful to other people's feelings and stuff because they want to keep their jobs. They want to look like they're doing their job. So they're going to find anything they possibly can to say, hey, wizards, you can't put this. This is, this is sensitive you know, or insensitive and people are going to get upset by this and you, know, you might have somebody cry and... Um, feel like they're not part of the group so you gotta take this out or you gotta change it so no matter what they're gonna tell things they're gonna tell wizards there's there's things that are that are wrong bad wrong um, and the very idea that you're hiring sensitivity writers to begin with is just a fucking joke that is a fucking joke that is pathetic uh, we're talking about a fictional game that you can even change the rules and situations and stories and all this stuff. You you decide what they are. Um, so that's just, it's silly. Um, but one of the things that, that got brought up, which I, I thought was very funny, was um, in The Curse of Strahd, um, has the Vistani in it, which the Vistani have been around since, um, I think, well, I know second edition had a lot of source books and things written on the Vistani, but I think they appeared in first edition, maybe in Castle Arfloft Adventure. I'm not sure. I have not read that, that book. 
Um, but I know Vistani have been around since at least second edition D&D, back when Ravenloft came out. Um, he says, regrettably, their depiction echoes some stereotypes associated with the Romani people in the real world. Okay. Uh, to rectify that, we've not only made changes to the Curse of Strahd, but in two upcoming books we will also show, working with a Romani consultant, uh, the Vistani in a way that doesn't rely on reductive tropes. So, if the Vistani are loosely based on um, uh, the Romani people and gypsies and things like that, but they're not an exact duplicate of, they're not transported from Earth to this fictional world of Ravenloft, they're based on the Romani people, right? So that means that since it's a fictional creation, you can do whatever you want with it, regardless of any, how anybody feels about it. Because you're not trying to hurt somebody in the real world, right? That's like saying um, an actor goes in to, pl to, to do voiceover work uh, to play Darth Vader or the Emperor in Star Wars. And... Well, I, you know, that's the, they're just bad people. We I don't want to be I don't want to be associated with that. We need to change these these characters to not be so negative and uh, mean and cruel, so and evil. So we have to make make change the characters, um, retcon everything, and, and and make them good people, right? That's essentially what you're doing. It's okay to depict certain people as a generalization with good traits and bad traits um, especially in fiction um, because you need that drama to drive a story forward if there's no drama in a story then it's not really a story there's no nobody cares there's no emotional investment so if you have um, homogenized your entire world with intelligent beings that are not evil and cannot be depicted as evil because that just wouldn't be fair racially. It'd be very insensitive. It's very insensitive. You don't want to actually hurt the feelings of people that don't exist. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to offend any drow out there or elves out there in the rural world by depicting by depicting um, drow as evil, as somebody that's that's a cousin to their race as evil. I just would that would be very insensitive and hurt feelings when we can't have that. Um, if if that's how the world worked, um, we would all be dead. There would be no there would be no anything. You couldn't do anything. If you had if you had to run your business based on everybody's feelings, or opinions, or what they liked or didn't like, we would have no businesses. We would have no entertainment. We would have no art. We would have no nothing, because in everything. There's going to be something that someone doesn't like. I don't like bananas. I think they're disgusting. Well, there's only one way to fix that. We have to stop the world from growing bananas. It's pretty simple. We've got to do it. That's essentially what it is. You can't, you know... It, there are things that bother me and upset me and hurt my feelings and offend me, but the world doesn't have to stop turning just because I'm upset about something. Um, I know you could say, well, you're being a hypocrite because you're upset about this. And I, 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 I get, I would understand someone's point if they said that. But you can't just not depict something fictionally, something that's not real. If it were a real thing, then t I understand totally that, you know, you can't go around being evil and, and enslaving races and um, killing people and, and this and that. I, I, I get that. But this is not real. This is a story. This is fiction. It's a game. And we're we're censoring things based on people's feelings about something that's not real. It's very unfortunate. Um, I 
I'm not really sure what else to say. Uh, it's just bizarre that, that this is where we're at in the world right now. This is the society we live in where we have to... We have to... censor ourselves and not be able to create freely and express ourselves through art freely that doesn't affect anybody. There's no one in the world who has died or been physically hurt or maimed or killed or whatever or enslaved um, because orcs are considered evil in D&D. Um, no one has went home and... <clears throat> beat up their wife or beat up their mom or shot at the cops or um, abused kids or anything like that because orcs are considered evil in D&D. &D. Um, there have been no corporate hostile takeovers or hostage situations or, um, you know, gang wars or turf wars or, uh, you know, you know, working middle class citizens poisoning each other because orcs are considered evil in D&D. &D. It's absurd. And just playing into the wokeness of it all, your virtue signaling is just so, it's so fake. It's so pathetic. Stop trying to villainize everything in order for yourself to be a victim. That's what these people do. These social justice warriors, that's what they do. They want to be a victim so people feel sorry for them because they're too pathetic to have real lives. So they try to villainize everyone and everything around them so they can play their victim card and have people feel sorry for them and cater to them because they're too weak, too emotionally and mentally weak and too socially weak to have a normal life. And so what they do is they find something that people like and enjoy and they infect it with their disease. They kill it and they move on to the next thing. And then they kill that, move on to the next thing, kill that, move on to the next thing. They don't give a shit about D and D. They don't give a shit about it works. They don't care about these things. They just want to, th that's why none of this has mattered until now because we are at an all time high in the world for social justice warriors and virtue signaling and all this oh poor me bullshit that they've killed one form of entertainment and affected one form of entertainment after another after another after another comic books movies music and now they're coming for D&D &D. why because D&D &D is super popular right now um, it wasn't always as popular as it is now it's socially acceptable to play D&D. &D. It's, it's cool to play D&D. &D. So that's why they're coming after D&D. &D. And all you companies that bend the knee are begging and allowing our art form to be infected with this disease and poisoned by it and to let it slowly die. Um, so stand up for yourselves. Stand up for your art. Don't bend the knee. Don't give in to these people because you can't give a little bit. If you try to give a little bit, they're going to take everything and they're going to destroy it. And that's what they're doing. So just a little thought while I'm sitting here waiting to go into the, to the, to the dentist. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I will talk to y'all later.